Oh. Well, where's this gasket? Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and we are in my shop. This is a Tiger Cub episode. This is the long-awaited engine assembly. I've done a lot of homework, and I think I'm ready. My confession to you is that I have never assembled a Tiger Cub motor before. I owned a Cub when I was 15. I worked on the gearbox, and I took the head off, but that's not the same as building a whole engine. And in this case, I started with four motors. Let's do what's new. This is the door for the sprocket, and that fits in like that. What I wanted to do, and I did, I machined up an alloy ring, and that's kind of tricky because it's, there's not a lot of surface there. I glued it on, and then I, I drilled through, and I, I tapped the holes there, a four mil thread. So this is new. You can see the glue there. I, I spread it around with a welding rod, and then I used some lacquer thinner and a rag, gloves, obviously, if you want to be safe. Can you see how it smoothed out really nicely? So we have a door, and there's going to be an oil seal that goes in there. So let's put that seal in now. I found a socket that's just the right size. We're going to do that right in the vise here. Okay, so that should be in there. Yep, that's in. Okay, we've installed a seal. There's no gasket here, so what I'm going to use is Loctite products. I ordered these, they came from the east. This plus this plus tax is $68, but this is a really good product. I've used it lots before. I'm told that it'll fill a gap up to 15 thou. And when you take it apart, you give it a tap, it breaks apart nicely, it peels off nicely. So it's not cheap, but it's a good product. We're gonna add some oil to the bearings because you, you always wanna oil everything. I made that mistake years ago. I was, I was 18, I started working in a machine shop and I had a Yamaha 350 and it didn't have a lot of miles on it, but I decided that I was gonna take it all apart and put new rings in and oil seals and all that. And I put it back together again and there was a huge noise and I couldn't figure out what I did wrong. So I took the motor out, I took it all apart again and what had happened in the transmission, I hadn't put any oil on the gears. So I didn't really have to take it apart. I could have just leaned the bike on its side and this side, that side. So I all the gears, put it back together again, and it ran perfect. So that was a pretty big learning lesson because that was a lot of extra work to take the motor out and take it all apart. I'm going to put in the, in the sprocket and the gear right now. I'll show you that. So I, I got the seal in there. I put a little bit of grease onto under the sprocket. Can you, can you see there's a little bit of grease there? It's this This seal... It's a tiny little seal, but it sure has a lot of stiction. I don't really understand why it's grabbing so much, but there we go. There's no lock tab, but you're supposed to punch it. But what happens is, is you're punching onto a, a hardened shaft. So I'm just going to use red Loctite. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. It's handy having a couple of two by threes, two by fours. This is the real start of assembly here. So I want to make sure that everything is clean. We've oiled those. Here's the bolts. I want to put a little bit of anti-seize on them, just a little bit. Not, I'm not going to overdo it. This is kind of a two-part thing. There is a primer, which maybe is a bunch of acetone. I don't know. Sure is expensive for acetone. So this is what you do. This is what sets it up. So you have to let this dry. It doesn't take that long. 
And then I've got a, a palette knife. It's from years ago when I, I tried to do oil painting. It's very handy in the shop. Sometimes you have to smear it round. Sometimes you can just put a, a line around. Okay, everything's oiled. So we've got seven bolts here. I looked in the Haynes manual. I have no torque settings for anything. Nothing, so I'm trusting my hands here to give the right amount of torque. No stripping, no under torquing. So what we do here now, I take my knife. See how it scrapes off? Isn't that beautiful? Just comes right off. And then you can take a rag, you can take a little bit of lacquer thinner if you want. See here, it's just a little bit there. It comes off really nicely. See that? That turned out pretty nice. I got two gasket sets which I bought so they were brand new and there is no no gasket in each one for here so and if you look at the surface here can you see how it's not really even it doesn't it looks like there's a low spot in the middle so I had to check I I wanted to check that there's end play here because I thought I'm, I'm, I'm not using a gasket. So this is what I did. I'll just show you the procedure, how this works. There we go. Get it the right way up. So we still have to put a bunch of stuff inside there, but I'm going to show you the process of, of checking end play because it's pretty crucial that you, you have to have some end play, but not excessive. This is my little little cub engine stand. Very handy having a stand. Can you see how that fits on there like that? So I got a dial indicator. I'm setting it up on the end of the shaft here. Okay, so we got about six thou. So as long as we have something, that's not excessive. When I started this, it had two thou. So I'll show you what I did to get a little bit extra movement there. So what I did to get some clearance here, I put this in the lathe. This is hard metal, but I took a few thou off right there. That's how I got the six or seven thou end play. It didn't want a machine, but it, it did at a carbide tool. So this is a shim that goes in there. Okay, so we've got the oil pump, how the oil pump works. There's a couple little ball bearings in there and there's a spring in there and it goes back and forth. You can actually hear it. See how that fits like that? That fits like that. There's a ball. And there's the other ball. And of course these are English size bolts. No metric, no standard. 
Okay, so this is Whitworth. It's a eighth inch Whitworth with a half inch drive. That really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? That's all I could find. So I'm gonna have to be very, very careful. I won't go out here. I'm gonna choke up on it. But I do have the right size, eighth inch Whitworth. And no stripping. If I strip a thread now, that would be really bad. We're going to put a little bit of oil on this guy here. So this is the worm gear that which drives the oil pump. So there's a key in here. See this key? Because I think it'd be easier if I put this on first. So that goes down like that. Okay, that sounds like it bottomed out. Ah, oh, there we go. See that? Feeds in there. Okay, this is the bushing that goes down inside because that shaft runs in the bushing there. So I'll put a little bit of oil on that. And this is a little bit of a, of a press fit. So let's see what happens. I can't think what else holds this in here. I think it's just a press fit. And gravity. Can you see right, right there? There's the bushing that I just drove down there. And so, and so the bushing is against the gear, and that's a little bit of a of a press fit inside the case, because so, it stops this from wandering up. So the next step is to put on the gear. It's a a pinion gear. It drives the cam, and I need another one. Last video we showed you this. This has some has some pit marks in it from rust. So there's nothing I can do about that right now. So we're just going to install it. And hope for the best. Hear that? That's the sound of it hitting home. Red Loctite works really well. If you ever have to take something off, you'll know all about it. So, somehow we have to hold this. I made this for the Cub. See how that works? This is an old wrist pin. It's not a brand new one. Can you see how that's gonna work? Let's say that's about 35 pounds. That's my best guess. When you assemble an engine like this, you have to look at the timing marks. Can you, can you see here? Can you zoom in? Can, can you see there's a punch dot and I've surrounded it with red Sharpie? And then on the case here, see there's a little indent right there? Those two have to line up. Can you see how that mark lines up with that mark? That's how you set the timing. We've got the lifters here. Can you see where the lifters go? They go into those holes right there. So we're gonna add some oil and put them in there. So this is the lifters going in. See how it just slides up there like that? I got some red line assembly lube. Can you see that? And it's, you can use it on, on cams when you assemble because if you leave the engine for a while, you know, regular engine oil, it can just, it can drip off. But this stuff here, it doesn't drip off. And it, when you first ever start a motor, you want to make sure that everything gets lubed. So I remembered that I had this. So we'll just put some of this on the cams. 
add some oil. So now this is when we need to get those marks lined up. No, and I still did it wrong. There we go. Just like that. So you can see there's a, a bushing there. It's not a bearing. They kind of cheaped out. There's a bushing on the other side. I don't think they over overspent when they made these engines. They did kind of the bare minimum. So sometimes you have to lift this up a little bit. Maybe. There we go. Okay, it settled in there. So this is the quadrant. This is what shifts. See those, those grooves there? Those two pins go into here. So that's the next step. And at the bottom here, can you see that? That's a spring. See how I push it down? So that spring holds, it loads everything up. Okay. So this goes in and, and these go into those four slots there. Something like that. But this has to come over. There we go, like that. There's a lock washer that has to go in here on the bottom. Because there's a bolt that goes in here that holds the spring down. This is what anchors the spring. That's the return spring. Okay. Our next step is to, is to put on the case and I need to do the gasket. And then we check and see if the shifting's right. So I hope the shifting is gonna work because otherwise we have to take it off and scrape off the gasket gear and then figure out what's going on. So I'm really hoping that we are good here. No pressure at all. I'm hoping my cub won't leak oil. I know I'm being a crazy optimistic to, optimist to even say that, but it would be really nice if it didn't leak oil. And we have to go right down the middle. That separates the gearbox from the cams and the oil pump. Okay, let's see what happens here. No, it's not settling down. Okay. Something is going on here and it's not going down as far as it should. What is happening here? Oh, look at that. Huh. Oh, the gear just didn't line up. Okay. I think we might be good now. This has not gone perfectly smoothly. But I'm still a patient man. Oh yeah, look at the gasket goose squeezing out now. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, it's pretty tight anyway. Okay, if you do this now, it's a lot easier than later. So this is the big test now. I'm gonna put this in the stand 
see if it shifts. If it doesn't shift, that's a problem. So shifting pattern on a Triumph Tiger Cub, it's left hand side, no, right hand side, one up and three down. And what I found was that if I, if I put this like that, then I can turn it and it helps me to shift it. Okay, so that's, that's first gear. Second. Third. Fourth. Oh, thank God. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed hanging out in the shop here while I had a little bit of a struggle. This is part one. You're gonna see part two when we get everything else on. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffees, much appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. Stay safe.